We need to find a non-constant solution to the given differential equation. And the first thing that we will do is replace the x prime with dx dt. That would be the derivative of the function x with respect to time. A lot of situations involving differential equations involve quantities that are changing with respect to time. So it's very common to change the prime notation into a derivative with respect to time. Next, we're going to try to gather all of the x terms to the left side of the equation and the t terms to the right side. This is known as separation of variables. And to do that, of course, we'll subtract x squared from both sides first. We will then have dx dt squared is equal to 16 minus x squared. And then we will take the square root on both sides. On the left side, the square will cancel with the square root. So now we have dx dt is equal to the square root of 16 minus x squared. Next, we'll multiply both sides of the equation by dt. They'll cancel out, of course, on the left-hand side. We now have dx is equal to the square root of 16 minus x squared dt. And then finally, to move the x terms to the left-hand side completely, we will divide both sides of the equation by this square root of 16 minus x squared so that they cancel out on the right-hand side. So now we've sort of rewritten the differential equation by separating the variables. And the next step after successfully separating your variables is to integrate on both sides. So we will integrate the left side and the right side. The right side is an easy integral. We know the integral of dt is just going to be t, but it's the left-hand side that's a little bit more complicated. Now, we might recall a trigonometric substitution technique that we learned in calculus two, perhaps. And in that technique, we would let a, excuse me, we would let x equal a sine of theta. Let me just rewrite it as that. Now, the a, will come from the fact that this expression right here can be rewritten in the form of square root of a squared minus x squared. So if you look very carefully at this expression, you can rewrite it as the square root of four squared minus x squared. And therefore, the a quantity would equal four. So in essence, what we're going to do is let x, in this particular case, equal four sine of theta. This is known as trigonometric substitution. And then the next step would be to differentiate both sides of this equation. So we would have dx is equal to four cosine of theta d theta. And then we'll make the substitution. So we'll rewrite the integral. In the numerator, we have the dx, which is this quantity right here. And then in the denominator, we have the square root of 16 minus now remember, our x was 4 sine of theta. So you're going to rewrite that as 4 sine of theta. And then don't forget to square it. We will simplify the denominator. We'll square the 4 sine of theta. So now we have 4 cos theta d theta over the square root of 16 minus 16 sine squared of theta as follows. And then we can actually factor out a 16 here underneath the square root. So you're gonna be left with 16 times one minus sine squared of theta underneath that square root. The numerator hasn't changed. Now, of course, we all are familiar with the identity that one minus sine squared is just cosine squared. So we will rewrite this yet again. We will have the square root of 16 cosine squared of theta. And then if we square root in the denominator, we can simplify that to just four cosine of theta. And the numerator also has four cosine of theta as well. So those are gonna cancel out. It's getting simpler by the minute. And now we have the integral of just d theta is equal to the integral of dt. The integral of d theta is theta. The integral of dt as noted earlier is t. It is common to put the constant of integration on the right hand side. So we will put it there for now, although we will see that we're gonna basically just let that equal zero for simplicity. We need to rewrite theta back in terms of x. Now recall we had said that x was equal to four sine of theta. And so what we'll do is divide both sides of that little equation by four. 
This gives us x over 4 is equal to sine of theta, and then take the inverse sine on both sides. So you'd be left with the inverse sine of x over 4 is equal to theta. So we'll make that substitution. So we have the equation back in terms of x. And now what we'll do is what I noted earlier. For simplicity, we're just going to let c, the constant of integration, equal 0. In many problems, you would be given enough information to actually solve for c. But here, they didn't give us that information. We're going to assume for simplicity that that's just equal to 0. Then to solve this for x, we'll take the sine on both sides. So the sine and inverse sine will cancel. You now have x over 4 is equal to the sine of t. And then finally, just multiply both sides of the equation by 4, and you have x is equal to 4 sine of t. So that would be your final answer. You can al also write this in function notation. You can say x as a function of time is equal to 4 sine of t. So that would be indeed the correct answer to the question.